turn to Proverbs. Proverbs. Will be one verse. Proverbs 16, verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Tonight, for the first time that I could remember, in church, I don't know if I'm going to post this or not, but we're going to head up some gum. And not only are we going to head up some gum, I want you to open it, and I want you to put it in your mouth, and I want you to mm -hmm. chew it. But the is not here. Yeah, I want you to chew it to a point where you can make the biggest bubble ever. We're going to be judged on it. So uh, go ahead and make it quick. Start chewing, put it in your mouth. It's okay, nobody knows. It's just us here, don't tell anybody else. So we did this in church. Once you chew it to a point where you can start blowing it, I want you to start blowing it. And I want to see it, and I'm going to pick up two people that have the biggest bubble. <laughs> and then we're going to have those people come up here, and then they'll do that here, and then you guys will judge on the winners of the biggest bubble. Solomon writing here. That pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall, before a fall. So uh, pride, and many Proverbs speak of pride. Pride is sin before the Lord, and we know the Lord does not like pride. Pride is what got the devil kicked out of heaven. He... Uh, Wanted to be like God, but he could never be like God because he's not God. And he was not a God. He was a created being. Like we know, the Bible speaks that he was created by God, and he's an angel. But because of his pride, he wanted to be something. He wanted to be better. He wanted to be like God. He got kicked out of heaven. That's because he was proud. He, uh, he wanted to be just like the Lord, and he, that was impossible. It's better to be humble, the Bible teaches, poor and humble, than proud and rich. It's better to be humble and poor than to share the plunder, the Bible says, with the proud. To choose pride is to set one up for a fall. And remember, we, we choose. Pride in this context of this verse, refers to an arrogant attitude. Pride is to think highly of yourself, is to think that you are better than someone else, is to think that you don't need God, that is pride. Pride is to think that you do things better than somebody else. Better than your friends. You read better. You, uh, you ride your bike better than everybody else. Pride is to be wise in your own eyes. Pride is to like yourself better than you like others. Pride is to think that you can live your life independent of God. That is pride. Humility, which is the opposite of pride, is to fear God, to realize your need for God, is to humble ourselves before and acknowledge our need for God, that we can't do this on our own. That is to humble ourselves. Uh, uh, hum to be humble is to prefer others above you. That's kind of a weird concept today, isn't it? It's not, uh, it's not a lived out. 
Today, it's all about me, me, me. We live in that society. It's a me, me society. It's all about me. Look what I have and look what I could do. All right, so let's uh, see those bubbles. You guys got to got it to a point now? All right, let me see. Blow out your bubbles. Let's see who's got you can make. Wow, Brother John. Oh, wow. All right, well, I've seen one. Sarah, number two. Anybody else? I'm going to give you a couple more chances. You guys could have took a more gum. Okay, okay, I see you. I see you. Yeah, I saw. I just saw that. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Okay, you two come up here. You win. No, no, you have, you have to do it under pressure. Pride. Let me just tell them this. This is pride is like this hot air they're blowing, and it's like the bubble that will be burst. Uh oh, Daniela's might be in the running after that one. That was a big one. All right. Let's see these two bubbles here. See who's on the pressure. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Sarah. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Let's go. You can do this. <laughs> some tissues around. We can use Brother Leroy right now. But uh, that's like pride right there. Do you uh, know of a story that could relate to this in the Bible? Remember the rich young ruler? In Matthew 19, the Bible tells us that one day Jesus was walking and this young man, he was young, he was rich, and he was a ruler. And the Bible says that he came to Jesus, and he sought him out, and he was very polite on top of that because he called Jesus master, and, uh, and he wanted to know what is it going to take to make heaven his home. That's a good thing, right? And, you know, Jesus didn't look down on him because he was young, Jesus didn't look down on him because he was rich. And Jesus didn't look down on him because he was a ruler. He was an authority. Maybe he had some business and he was in charge. But we don't see anywhere in the Bible where Jesus looked down upon him because of these things. But Jesus did want him to know what it takes to make heaven his home. And Jesus began to pry him. And, and, and he, he told him of six different laws that he was to keep out of the ten. And this young man said, Lord, I have kept all of these laws. I keep these laws, including loving your neighbor. That's pretty impressive, right? You would, at this point of the story, you would say, this young man... He's a good young man. There's nothing wrong with him. He, he's done all these things right. And he, he, just because he's rich, just because he's good looking, just because he's a boss, does that make you a bad person? Can you be all those things and still make it to heaven? Can you? I think so. I think there's going to be young people in heaven that are rich, that were bosses, were in, in charge and control, told people what to do. And that's what this young man was doing. And, and Jesus, again, he had no problem with all of this. And then on top of that, he kept the laws that Jesus 
Ask them if you are keeping these laws. And he said, of course. And I don't, I don't know if that was in a prideful way that he said that. But of, of course, I'm, I'm, I've kept all of these as a young man. I'm keeping all these laws. So far, so good, right? But you know what? There's always something that people can let get in the way from fully serving the Lord. <coughs> and, and you see it in this young man's life. And, and if, you, if you were to ask somebody, and maybe they, they know the gospel, maybe they've been around the gospel, maybe they've even experienced and they've been saved, but now they're, like we heard, lukewarm or backslidden. And, and, and you ask them, what is it? Why aren't you serving the Lord? And there's always something. They, they might not tell you, but there's always this something that's hindering them, holding them up, in the way. And, and Jesus knows all things. Jesus knew this young man's heart. And he got to the heart of the problem with him. And, and he told them, okay, so far so good. I have nothing against you. Everything's good, except... He told them to go do something. And here's that one thing that could get in the way. And you know what that one thing is that maybe it's hindering you. Look, it's a good question to ask the Lord. What is it going to take for us to make heaven our home? I want to know, don't you? We, we want to know what is it going to take to make heaven our home? And, and thank the Lord, the Bible tells us that what we need to do, we must be born again. We need to know that we are saved, that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. That's where it begins. But we want to know that. That's a good, honest question to ask. We need to know. And we need to answer that question. And this young man, Jesus told him to go do one thing. He did all these things right. Can you imagine doing a hundred things right? But yet, doing one thing that was wrong? That would be good with your mom and dad, right? I mean, if my kids did a hundred things right and one thing wrong, I think I can live with that. Depends on what that one wrong thing is. But just in generally speaking. But Jesus, he gets right to where we live. You know that? He, he does. He, know, he knows. He knows how to get right to where our heart is at. He says this to this young man. If that will be perfect, complete, it's all good. If, if you say everything's good, then he tells him this. Can you believe this? Does somebody know? Savannah, you know what he told him? No? Does anybody else? Do you know, Lance, what he told this young man? Uh, I forgot. Go. Sell. That thou hast. All that thou hast. Ooh. And give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. Mmm. There's that one thing. There's that one thing, that pride. He could not humble himself. Here, Jesus, so far, he was perfect. He was complete. Everything was good. You're going to make it to heaven. And then he got close to his heart. The things that matter to him. And you see, this young man's problem was he loved his possessions, the things that he had more than God. His pride kept him out of heaven. His possessions kept him out of heaven. And we don't, we don't know if that's all that was because it could have been the fact that you know, he, he could have lost everything. He, he must have thought, well, if I, if I do this, what are people going to think of me? What are, what are my employees, my workers, what are they going to think of me? They think I would lose my mind. See, this young man, to this point, he, he had everything going for him. Everything was good, including his relationship with God. It was good, but he could not get himself to a point where he can part ways with what mattered to him. And you see in his heart, what mattered to him 
was his possession, was his riches, was his money. The Bible says it's not the money. It's not the riches. It's not being young. It's not being a ruler. But you know what he had? He had the love of money rooted in his heart. That's what mattered to him. It was his treasure. He wasn't willing to trade his treasure from on earth and set it in heaven. He wasn't willing to go and sell everything he had and then follow the Lord. You know, that's what it takes is to get rid of everything, to sell it all, to serve God. You can't serve God and you can't serve mammon. The Bible says you can't serve one or the other. You can't be one way. And then another way at church. You can't be a one way at work. One way at school. You can't be one way around your friends. And be one way at church. It's not going to work. The Lord knows our hearts. He knows where we're at spiritually. And, and here this young man. He, he was trying to have it all. And you can't have it all. You want God to have it all. God has had, had, he has to have it all. And he could not part ways with these riches. Was that a good choice? Is that a good decision that he made? What do you think? No. He left the way the Bible says he went away sorrowful. For he had great possessions. To this young man, it was his riches. It was his possessions. Could there be something that we're not willing to give the Lord? Something that he's asking from us that is standing in the way. When the Lord comes to you and he puts his finger on something in your life, in my life, and maybe you go to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to draw closer. I want to be like you. I want to serve you in a greater measure. I want these things and I want a close relationship to you. And the Lord says, well, how about that? Will you give me that? And you can say, Lord, I've done all these things. I'm doing all these things and I'm doing all this and I'm coming to church and I'm serving you. And the Lord says, yeah, great. But how about that? To him who was his possession, what is it to us that he's putting his finger on? What is hindering us, holding us back? There's got to be something. I hope there's nothing that we can get our prayers through. But you know, uh, you think about that, this is a very serious situation because there, there's no place in the Bible that it tells us that he came back and he realized his mistake and he asked the Lord to forgive him. You know, some people only have one opportunity, one chance. Thank the Lord that we were born and raised in a Christian home where God has given us a lot of opportunities. But there's no guarantee that that's going to continue to give us opportunities. One day we will stand before the Lord and we will, we'll have to give an account. We'll give that answer. It'll be too late. Pride stood in his way. That hot air, he thought he was somebody. That bubble was so big. It was all about him. Life was about him. He was consumed with what he had. And he didn't want to trade that for following the Lord. The biggest mistake he ever made, and I'm sure he's regretted that. I hope that somehow, some way, he turned to the Lord and asked for forgiveness. He repented. But there's so many people in the last eternity that don't have an opportunity anymore. And you think what they're spending their time thinking in the last eternity that goes on forever, thinking, if I only, if I only would have, if I only would have just got rid of the pride and said, I... Lord, I'm coming clean. I, whatever it takes, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to say, Lord, yes, I'll go and sell it all. I'll give it up to follow you. That's the greatest decision. That's the best decision you can make. And Jesus is here. He loves you. There's no doubt about that. He cares for you. And he's saying, would you give that up for me? Would you just lay that aside? 
Whatever it is. You know, the Bible talks about weights, like Brother Noah brought up. Weights that hinder us. Right? Those are, he talked about the benefits. But you know, there's weights like that that do hinder us. Yeah. And people are carrying them around. And it's heavy and it's baggage. And the Lord is saying, get rid of them. This possession, this richness this, that, that this young man had, it was a weight that he couldn't get rid of. Yeah. And yet he had an opportunity. Jesus, the Bible says in another place, as he came and fell on him, Jesus loved on him. When he, Jesus looks at us, he loves on us. No matter where we're at, he loves us. God help us to say yes to the Lord tonight. Get rid of it. Whatever it is, and say, Lord, here it is. Think if he would have said, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go, I'm going to sell, I'm going to get to the poor, and I'm going to come follow you. That's the greatest decision he could have made. And we're confronted with that decision all the time. It's before us all the time. It's every time we come to church, we hear the gospel message go forth. It's challenging. Yes, I know. It's for all of us. It's his word. God help us to make that decision to follow him. We're going to sing 205. The Lord's speaking to you. And he's putting his finger on something like he does to me. And I know he does to you. Just say yes, Lord. I'm going to give it up. Hey, I'm just going to relinquish that. That's all yours. And I'm going to follow you with all my heart. All that is within me. 205. Come forward.